everyone, and welcome to our fourth episode of Shaman's Way. It's a very special episode on one of mine and Cricket's favorite, I'm sure, on Waking the Bear. Hello, Mr. Doug. I am excited to be here to talk about Waking the Bear. Waking the Bear has been a long time ritual for me. I don't know if I've been doing it for 15 years or if I've been doing it for 17 years or if I've been doing it for 12. I really don't. It has become such a big part of my spiritual practice that I honestly don't remember when I started. I know that I have a Waking the Bear flyer from 2003 on my computer and so I know it's been going since before 2003 so that's 13 years and uh, I used to have them in the circle as a birthday celebration because my birthday is on equinox and so I thought what a great way to celebrate my birthday <laughs> would be to have a ritual and so for many years it stayed in circle and it didn't it wasn't really a big thing we'd get a few more people in but it wasn't really a big draw or a big attraction and so one year in the temple i decided to do awaking the bear obviously because it was the spring equinox and bear truly showed up so i had this great circle plan we were going to do uh you know a grandfather bear posture a trans posture which we talked about in podcast number three we talked about trans postures there are postures that are dedicated surprise surprise just to bear and uh, then i had some journeys that we were going to do to the cosmic bear and then we we're going to take a journey to the cave bear and so i you know i thought that we'd have maybe 30 35 people which is a lot in that small Buddhist temple down in Riverdale. 54 people showed <laughs> up. It was like Bear said, come on in, everybody. And so everybody came on in. And I remember standing on the stage by the Buddhas, and I all I could think was, oh, this is not going to work at all. <laughs> so... That was the night that Cricket the Storyteller was born because there was, there was no way that I could at all do what I had expected to do. So what happened was I decided to tell a story. Now at that time, I didn't do stories every year. But a number of years prior to that, uh, I got the last line of a story delivered into my head. And sometimes if I write poetry or if I write stories, I get the last line and then I have to write backwards to the beginning of the story. So I wrote this story about Nanabushu. Nanabushu is the raven and how the raven brings sunshine to the world. I had no idea at that time that the West Coast Salish natives had the story of the raven bringing the sun to the people. I had no idea of it at all. So that was the very first time that the spirit of story had ridden my body. And I wish I would have recorded that story because what was a four and a half page story turned into this amazing story that was funny, it was delightful, it kept people entertained. And that was the very first time that I had physically been ridden to tell a story and the story told me I didn't tell the story all I had was the basis of the story that I had written years prior so that was how I became a storyteller for Waking the Bear and the current Waking the Bear one of the things that really brings people together is the storytelling so I made sure I found a finished story uh, a story from Finland about the bear and uh, so I made sure and I haven't quite finished it in the way of a storyteller so I haven't polished it off I know we're recording this just a bit before waking the bear uh, so I want you to know I hope it was really good those that do listen to it and did go to the actual ceremony and the other part that has become really important in waking the bear are the songs 
And I want to share with people how finding my voice happened. It was a good number of years ago at North Country Fair. This was before North Country Fair had to move its location and now it shares a place by Dussard and Astral Harvest, another really great music festival also shares that space. But this was on the old land and there was a lake on the old land and it was that was going to be solstice morning on Sunday. And, you know, it's a music festival. So you're up all night and, you know, you are imbibing of various amounts of alcohol and or maybe other things. I don't know. I'm not those people. I'm just myself. <laughs> and I was laying in the tent and I heard this woman say, who was coming to greet the sun? And I was laying going, not me. And then I heard the call again, who is coming to greet the sun? And again, I replied, not me. And then I heard her say it the third time, who is coming to call the sun? And like, I am so drawn to the number three. It's absolutely incredible. So if I'm asked to do something three times, likely I will do it. So I went, oh, fine. So I picked up my drum and I walked the edge of the beach and there was a group of people there. And I remember standing there and my, I remember beating my drum and there were some other drummers there. And all of a sudden my body started to just shake and I could feel a song coming. And I said, Oh, no way. I'm not singing out loud. I can't sing. And then I was beating my drum and my body shook worse and worse. And my throat started to hurt because it was stuck. The song was stuck. So all of a sudden I started to sing. And so I sang in the summer solstice. And that was the very, er, that was the very first time that I had ever found my voice. And what was beautiful about that experience was that it gave rise to another spirit called the spirit of song. And there were, there was probably about five years after this, I was sitting around a drum circle that was being held at the Native Friendship Center. And I was, um, you know, I was allowed to play my drum and I was playing my drum and I started singing this song. Now, I have to tell you, if you don't know me, I am from, certainly from, you know, northern Finland, and I'm certainly as white as white can be, and I certainly was not singing a white song. I sang this beautiful song of a language I didn't understand, and I had this incredibly generous and gentle elder walk come up to me and he was very grandfatherly and his shoulders kind of stooped over and he had beautiful leathered skin and his hair was braided and it was beautiful black and beautiful gray and he said how did you know that song and i said that song just came to me and he said i haven't heard that song in years that's albert's song and i said what do you mean that's albert's song and he said well when you die, your songs head into the spirit world. And sometimes they find a voice and they come through and they're sung again because they're lonely. And that was a beautiful permission, I guess, to be completely open to whatever sounds and songs spirit has to sing. So over the years, I've gathered different songs in order to to uh, sing and call in bear. So what I wanted to also kind of talk about is why waking the bear? What does the bear have to do at all with spring? And in Alberta, where we live, we have different wake times for the bears. We have late March, early April wake time, and then we have a later wake time for other bears. Having it be at spring e spring equinox, it's just before the time where the bears wake up. And bear has been an amazing companion for me throughout the 25 years that I've been doing this work. 
there has led me to some of the deepest places for my my spirit some of the deepest places of my soul and it is incumbent upon me as bear's friend to share the story of bear with people so every year it is a challenge i guess for me to um bring another aspect or a different aspect of bear to the individuals who come to to talk to the spirit of bear in ceremony and one of the things like in 2007 as an example i was pulling up some of the ideas that i've had for waking the bear in 2007 i really focused on bear as the keeper of the dream time so the stories and the teachings of dreams until the dreamer wakes up to them. So the bear, bear keeps those dreams until we wake up, until we see the teachings of those. And many tribes have called this space the space of inner knowing or the dream lodge. And this is where the death of the illusion of physical reality kind of overlays the expansiveness of eternity. Bears seem to have that ability to confound humankind in that the bear can be in the dark cave and can sleep for so many months and come awake into this expanded sense of consciousness. So our stories talk about our dream times. We go to the dream lodge and manifest and incubate our stories in the dream lodge and bear being that spiritual being that takes care of the dream lodge. So they advise us in alternative ways to get to our goals because Bear has seen time since the beginning of time. And if we have a story, we want to take it to Bear and say, oh, this is the story. And Bear, if it's a celestial Bear, you know, like we have the Ursus Major and the Ursus Minor in Canada and the Northern Hemisphere. And we take our stories to Bear and Bear will read the stars. And wherever those stars go is the trajectory of your dream. And you're not usually the first one to have this dream because Bear has kept the dreams for so many years that Bear can say, ah, this is where your story goes and this is where your ancestors went. So the bear was, was venerated as the grandfather because the bear had seen everything. Bears are active during the day and the night. So to our ancestors and to us, this really symbolizes its connection with solar energy and the strength and power of the solar energy and also the lunar energy, that of intuition. By embracing the wisdom of the bear, we take lessons within ourselves and we learn how to balance both. So we learn how to balance the masculine, the solar, the feminine, the lunar, so you know, the doing the action. There are also called bear shamans. <clears throat> and bear shamans and bear medicine <coughs> societies are present in many forms in many different diverse and distance people. So we have the Anu people of Japan who have a very strong relationship with bear. We have the uh, Siberian shamans who raise the bear and have a bear ceremony. We have the Finnish shamans who, when they um, have a bear, when they've been able to sacrifice a bear or bring a bear, then they have very special rituals and they'll bury the bear in the sky. So the sky bear is what is important. And they face the skull of the bear. They've tied it high in the highest tree and they face the skull down so that the spirit of the bear can re-enter through the crown, through that intuition, through the head, and be reborn again as another bear. So even death cycles and death rituals and death rites are very strongly associated with bear. So we have the bear shamans are known for their characteristic, they characterize like a spiritual bear. So any hunter can tell you how the great claws of the bear rip through the trees or the brushes or digging deeply in passion into hills. And we see that when we go out for a walk and you see the poplar trees. And I often want to see how high the bear goes and you can see where they scrape it. And, and I like watching for those kinds of signs and symbols of the bear. 
So their shamans use their gifts. So their claws dig deep into the human body to remove what doesn't belong. And their shamans have been the great healers of deep wounds, as well as you know others have been known for healing bones. So there are some bear shamans that are supreme bone setters. And so there wasn't very long ago that there were tribes who would travel to go see a shaman in a distant place. And distant could be 30 miles, could be 40 miles away in order for that shaman to set the bone because that bear shaman knew what the bone was about. So bear has been for many, many years, bear has been the great healer, the primary physician. So bear is given that reverence. Bear has been a part of our collective psyche for almost 50,000 years. The Paleolithic caves and the altars that have been found within the Paleolithic caves, the oldest of the old belong to the bears and then also to the, to the lions that lived in them. So we have had bear imprinted on our spiritual soul since time Im Im immoral or time what is that word? Memory. Anyway, we're going to edit that part <laughs> out. Since time, be, well, we've just had bears imprinted on our very soul for like ever and ever. Amen. And uh, the, I want to talk just a little bit about, about how the bear enters your body and heals. So the bear is responsible to heal our physical self, our spiritual self, and our mental self. And on March, you know, in the spring equinox, when we are celebrating the spirit of the bear, we're waking up the bear, we're waking up our own dream. And so that was the message that I brought about in 2007. So even then, I wanted to teach what specifically is it about that particular medicine or that particular bear. And the in 2003, I started to talk a little bit more. This is where I came to introduce the bear as the supreme physician. So this is the people's ideas of the Northern Hemisphere. So um, over a year ago, Bear made it clear to me, this is in 2003, so this would be 13 years ago now, uh, that she wanted more of her healing ways passed along. So in retrospect, the bear in that journey really foresaw some of the troubling times we had headed into. 2001 was the bombing of the World Trade Center, and it was in March of 2003 that there were the biggest demonstrations globally at that time to stop the U.S. from heading into the Iraqi war, and that was in very early of 2003. And if I'm mistaken, then I, I, I'm mistaken. But my remembering of that and is that she foresaw that there were troubling times and so she really wanted to talk about that, her being the healer. So in that, I talked about times of, of uh, gathering darkness. And even now, we are really in a place of gathering darkness. We see more things happening in the world with respect to ISIS, with respect to the Boko Haram, with respect to the Donald Trump issues that are going on in the States. Like we can name any number of things. So it's quite interesting to see the parallel between 2016 and 2003. So uh, the Earth, right at this point, exists as a potential of dismembering of our awareness as one people, one Earth, one sky. And Bear really didn't want us to forget that we were one people, one earth and one sky. So this was the year that I really talked about in ritual where we wanted to bring bear to our healing paths, to a larger community. So shamans played an important role in helping the tribe or the people maintain their sense of unity, their sense of psychic integrity, and especially in times when crisis arise and it fragments us and it brings us into a place of grievous harm. So bear is that physician, that energy that helps us to uh, not fragment and not give ourselves into grievous harm. So in this day and this age, there are many people who live in fear and the trembling sounds of war. And in both general and specific ways, current affairs over the last years have affected and left many of us uncertain on many levels. And I mean, the 
the decrease in the gas prices and what Alberta is facing with respect to its economic hardship, this is where a perfect time to come to bear. This is a perfect time to come to that being that has been with us forever and ever and held us forever and ever. So those are two of the ideas that uh, kind of span the years of waking the bear. In 2016, one of the things I always pay attention to is the number of a day. And I love numerology, Pythagorean numerology. I don't know a lot about the Chaldean numerology. So in Pythagorean numerology, we talk about uh, one through nine. And so if I'm doing a ceremony on any particular day, I always add up the numbers and find out what the number for that day is. Now, we kind of laughed earlier about the three, you know, who will sing their song, who will sing their song, who will sing to the sun. And the number for Waking the Bear from March 18th happens to be a three. So we're really going to talk about the number three and what the three levels of the bear are. So the bear being awake, the bear is so consciousness, then preparing ourselves for unconscious, and then going into the dream time. So now we're coming out of the dream time. What do we do with that? So we want, I really want to focus on what are the threes. So that is going to be the focus of the Waking the Bear for 2016. Now I am absolutely positive that people are wondering what in the heck is Pythagorean <laughs> numerology and what does that have to do with shamanism and what does that have to do with rituals in a bear? Well, I don't think numerology has a lot to do with shamanism, but I think that we've always been aware of uh, patterns. And so in our ability to be aware of patterns, we are also aware of the how the wind is going to affect the clouds and what the clouds are going to say about the weather and what the, the way that the plants are growing is a different from this cycle before last season. And so even though we didn't necessarily have a numerical system for understanding the world, we had a visual and an acuity and a relationship to the world around us. Many of us have lost that relationship of the world around us. So many of us can look up into the, into the Edmonton skies, see the clouds, and not know what those clouds specifically mean. So in order to bring back a relationship to the time period that I'm living in, I have found another way to access that. So one of the ways to access a relationship with time is through numbers. And the number three is an amazing number because it is the first number where we actually have manifestation. So zero is that place of void, is that place of nothingness, is that place of no going. Then we have the singular of one, so we have a straight line. And then we have duality, which is number two, which is that next line. And so the number three is that third line. So the very first geometric shape that we have is that of a triangle. And the very basis of that could be, you know, the basis of the world tree. So one part of the, the triangle goes into this side of the underworld and this side of the roots and this side of the triangle goes to that side of the roots and so on and so forth. And what does that have to do, anything to do with Waking the Bear? And I, and so I want to honor the ability of the triple aspect of us, our conscious aspect, mind, body, spirit. I want us to, to worship in, in that regard. I want us to remember that we have voices. We have a drum, we have a voice, we have a journey, we have a purpose. And I want to break the group, our groups off into three. So I want the ritual itself to also be tripartite. So I want to manifest the number three, and I want to manifest a sense of security and the opportunity to dream. There is so much uncertainty in Alberta right now. There is so much uncertainty globally right now that I want the ritual to really manifest and bring about a sense of comfort and peace and the ability to, to dream again and safely dream.
Very cool. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. And maybe we'll uh, do some recordings on the, this the story that you come up with and, and put that up later. That would be fun. <laughs> I would love that. Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully everyone enjoyed that very special episode on Waking the Bear. We will have show notes with uh, any links to, to things we discussed in this episode, including the recording of uh, Cricket's story from the live Waking the Bear ceremony. Uh, all that will be available at shamansway.net slash podcast. So hopefully you come join us there as well. And... Uh, We will talk to you soon. Cheers.